Hello, Anamin Yan here, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to import survivors uh, from Dead by Daylight into Blender. And specifically, we're going to be looking at recolors, which are outfits like these, and how to make them uh, with uh, uh, the plugin UE Shader Script that I wrote. Also, as an extra thing, we're going to be looking at animations and uh, this IK rig, which um, is an optional step but will be made with the paid plugins AutoRig Pro and AutoRig Pro Quick Tools. Okay, uh, so before we get started, one quick thing, there is a Discord link uh, in the description below, so please join the Discord in the description below um, for any questions or anything, So because it's easiest for us to help you out there, um, and yeah, so please join the Discord uh, server in the description below. But before we get started uh, with what we're doing, so I just want to clarify what is a recolor and what is not a recolor. So a recolor is when we change is is for these outfits. Uh, it's something made by behavior, and it's when we, they change just the colors of the outfits. So have a look, as you can see here, I'm switching the colors of the outfits. These are recolors. However, if I change to a different outfit altogether, you can see the mesh changed and the textures changed. This is not a recolor but these are recolors of each other, right? So we're gonna be looking at how to create these in Blender and create custom recolors like this. As you can see here, I made my own custom recolor. First things first is software prerequisites. So first thing you need to do is just type in BFZZ, PSK, uh, PSA, uh, GitHub, okay? And you'll find this as the first link. So what you wanna do is just scroll down here and just right click on this 280 direct link. So current branch latest, 280 direct link, not 270 direct link, 280 direct link. Right click, save link as, and just save it wherever you want. I've already saved it, so I won't save it again, but yeah, that's it. So the next thing that you wanna do, um, all these uh, software prerequisites are in the, uh, the links are in the video description, so check that. Okay, so uh, the next thing you wanna search up is just you model in Google. I uh, just search it up, click on the first link, the links are in the description below as well. Download, uh, so download the version for your operating system. I would download the Windows 32 version, but since I already have it, I'm not gonna download it again. Okay, that's done. And the next thing you, that you need is um, uh, a few skeletons, Adam Nyan, uh, GitHub. If you wanna search that into Google, you can also find the link in the description. And you wanna go to the releases tab and just right click on this view skeletons v whatever dot zip. So right click, save link as, and then you wanna save it wherever you wanna save it. I've already saved it. Uh, then the next thing, a final thing, I know it's a little bit weird that there's so many plugins that you have to download, but this will make your life much, much, much easier. So UE Shader Script, uh, P, uh, sorry, Adam Yan, GitHub. Uh, GitHub. Yep, yeah, uh, so you can click on this link, and but it should be in the description below again. UE Shader Script, Releases, and then you wanna right click, right click on UE Shader Script uh, v point whatever, uh, dot zip, and save link as, and just save this wherever you wanna save it. So yeah, and that's downloaded everything. So now we just need to install all these plugins. So let's just uh, create a new Blender tab. Uh, let's go to General. Uh, edit preferences, uh, add-ons, install. So just navigate to wherever you downloaded it. So you want to down, you want to install the uh, few skeletons v whatever dot zip, install add-on. So select it and install. That's done. So you just want to search up, make sure that it's enabled. So search up few skeletons and make sure this tick box is enabled. So you can just close that and just uh, install. And you want to IO import scene unreal PSA PSK 280.py. Select that, install add on, then search up PSK. So just to filter it, and you should make sure that checkbox is enabled. Next thing, install, uh, get the UE shader script v whatever dot zip, install, and just type in UE space shader and make sure that this add on is, inst is installed here by uh, making sure this checkbox is. Uh, enabled. Yeah, and that's all the Blender stuff. So the next thing that you need to do is just go to uh, wherever you downloaded that umodel.zip file, 
So I had it here, but uh, what I where I really have installed it on my machine, so I'm just gonna move it to here. I would replace it, so I just have it here. But what you would do is you would right click, extract here, right? So you should have extract here or extract files for you. And you should get something like this. Ignore the other assets and 4.7.2 uh, DVD packs, but everything else should be here. Now, what you wanna do is you just want to double click on umodel.exe, right? So now is where we need to find our pack files. So you, should, you see this path to game files here. So we just need to find where our pack files are so we can extract the 3D models from these pack files. So you just wanna open Steam and go to your library here and go to Dead by Daylight. Click on this cog icon right here, manage, browse local files, right? And it should open a folder right here and that's all good. So what you wanna do here is you wanna click, so left click, left mouse button on an empty part of the address bar. So to the right of the address bar, just right, just, uh, just left click in the empty space and you should highlight the address bar so just press control C here. So you'll copy this path here. And what you'll do is go back to U model and just press control V to paste it. So that will uh, bring you to the correct uh, path to the game files, override game detection, Unreal Engine 4, uh, 4.25, because uh, Dead by Daylight is using Unreal Engine 4.25 as of the current patch, uh, 5.0.1. So that's all good, just press okay. Okay, so now we're in the pack file. So the crucial uh, areas that you wanna look at is the game characters folder. Cause this is where uh, all the 3D models for the characters, the killers and the uh, survivors are located. So survivors are located under campers, slashes uh, are the killers. So what we wanna do is we wanna find Fang for this instance, because what we're trying to create is this, right? So let's just uh, find Fang and we're just gonna find the Fang folder, which is here. It's it's just Fang uh, in, in the code, in the game code. But anyway, so we're just gonna look at this models folder. So this is where all the models are located for Fang. So we're just gonna right click on this folder, click on open folder content. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the page down to go forward to the next model and page up button to go to the previous model. So page down, next, page up, previous, right? And make sure that navigate uh, include meshes is checked and that just means that you'll see the textures because if you don't have this checked, if you don't have this checked, I'll show you what happens. You see, we're looking at, we're seeing these textures here. We don't want to see these. We just want to see the 3D models. So what we want to do is navigate, include meshes, make sure that is checked. Okay, so just press the page down uh, key. So, oh wait, sorry. You need to press control T to mark this um, 3D model for export. Okay, so it's, it's marked for export. Now press page down to keep navigating through the meshes. So I'm looking for the meshes that I want. I want, uh, I want this one, so I'm just gonna control T. Uh, and I also want this one here uh, because I just wanna demonstrate something. So just press page down. I'm just pressing page down on the uh, keyboard just to navigate through these meshes until I see something that I want. So I want this one, so I'm just gonna press control T to mark it for export. Okay, so I want uh, this one right here. So I'm just gonna press Control T. So now that I've marked everything for export, I wanna go Tools, Export Current Object. Now, I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm just going to, wait one second, before I do this, I'm just gonna clear everything in that folder. Just, um, so, I'm, so what I advise doing is just making a new folder um, I'm just gonna clear everything in that folder first before I do anything. So I am just going to, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to navigate and I'm just going to go to that folder again. So I'm just going to go to Blender Projects and I'm just going to create uh, a Feng Recolor uh, new tutorial. I'm gonna create a new folder because this is the cleanest way of doing it. So just press select folder and press okay. So this will uh, export everything here, which is great. Um, but what we also need to do is we also need to export a few other things. So how did I do that just there? I just pressed the key O to open this thing again. So press O. So the letter O, and now what I wanna do is I wanna go to the materials folder. Oh, wait, sorry, models. I wanna go to the models folder for Fang. Models, so Fang models. And I wanna also export this base skeleton. 
So I exported this as well, that's great. Um, I also want to export just the materials for this outfit. So the materials for the recolors are usually like, uh, where are they? Can I quickly verify? Yep, yeah, so they're just CV. So if you can actually also type in the filter here, you can type in CV and you can see that these will be the recolors. So if I just untick uh, include meshes, so I can just right click, open folder content. Oh, whoops. Let's, um, let's make sure that include meshes is not checked. So these are just some of the different recolors and what they look like. Um, but don't worry about that. We just want to export all these. So what we're going to do to export all these is just select all of them. So select this one, the top one, and select the bottom one. I, no, whoops. Select the top one, hold the shift key, and select the bottom one. This will select all of them, press export, and then just press um, OK. So that's fantastic. And the final thing we want to do is we just want to import uh, export the animation just to test it. So just look for the sit on log animation. This uh, is for testing purposes. I'll explain it later, but you want the sit on log animation if you can. If not, just take another animation, but uh, this is the best animation for testing purposes. So just select it, export OK. Cool, fantastic. Let's uh, make a new Blender window. Yep, okay. Okay, so we have a new Blender window here. Okay, so we're back. I've just enabled the screencast keys add-on. So I'm just gonna press A to select everything. And I'm just gonna press X to delete. And I'm just gonna press delete. So what I'm gonna do now is just press N and I'm going to um, go to the PSK, PSA, uh, so I'm gonna press N to show this panel here, and I'm gonna go PSK, PSA. So I'm gonna enable reorient bones, and I'm gonna change this to mesh. So I'm gonna import PSK. So what I'm gonna do is just navigate to where I have these meshes here. So I'm gonna to go to uh, just where I put it. So what I'm gonna do is go to game, characters, campers, bang. And I'm just going to add this folder here just as a shortcut, because I know I'll have to come back here. So. I'm just going to uh, import the head here. So as you can see, I'm just, I just scrolled in. Uh, so just a quick review of the navigation keys in Blender. Remember that uh, it's all about the left mouse button, so uh, the middle mouse button, sorry, the middle mouse button. So shift plus middle mouse button is to, oh, sorry, shift plus middle mouse button is pan. Middle mouse button by itself is rotate. And then uh, control plus middle mouse button is to zoom in and out. So if you just remember that, shift, shift, uh, middle mouse button, pan, middle mouse button by itself, rotate and control, zoom in and out, that will help you uh, navigate um, uh, really easily in Blender. Okay, so we just use control, middle mouse button to zoom in, and now we're just gonna import the other meshes. So to import the hair, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, put both, so put this on all. Okay, so whenever you import hair or other accessories, make sure you change it to all to import both the skeleton and the mesh. So I'm just going to import this one here, so just for demonstration purposes first. But let's change this back to mesh to import the rest of the meshes. I'm just gonna go back up. I'm gonna go to the torsos, import that torso there. I'm gonna import these legs here, right here. Okay, that's fantastic. But we also need to change this to scale and import the base skeleton. So this is the base skeleton right here, and this is a skeleton that everything will be parented to. Okay, so let's uh, start off by parenting everything to that base skeleton. So, so just select uh, the torso, hold the shift key and select the head, and then uh, hold the control key and select that skeleton as the last selected thing. Press control P uh, and armature deform is fine. Okay, so now how do we deal with this hair? So this hair right here, I just have it for demonstration purposes because it's on the ground. And this is especially for the older hair meshes. So I'll show you how to deal with it. So uh, we installed the Fuse Skeletons add-on right here and we're gonna have to make use of it very soon. So what we're gonna have to do is select both these skeletons. So select uh, this one with the left mouse button, hold the control key and select the other one. And, and what you're gonna do is just select skeleton and Select the base skeleton here, the FMD skeleton ref. That's the base skeleton and press fuse. So we have fused these skeletons together. They're joined together. But uh, what we want to do here is uh, it's not going to work. So I'll just show you what happens when we import a PSA. Um, so when we import a PSA, um, 
So the animation, when we import the animations, we're going to go to Fang, Animations, Sit on Log. You'll see what I mean. So as you can see here, the hair is not responding. It's, it's just by itself, it's just chilling, right? So we, we need to uh, solve that. So what we're going to do is press Control Z um, just to go back. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this. So we just go press numpad one to change the front view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, press N to give myself a little bit more real estate. Uh, press numpad one again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press G to move it. And I'm going to press Z. So I'm going to move it only in the X, the Z axis, right? So that's what it means. So I'm going to restrict my transforms to the Z axis. That looks okay. I'm going to go numpad three to look at inside view. And I'm just going to check, hold Z and I'm going to change the wireframe just so I can adjust it more nicely. So I'm using control middle mouse button to zoom in and I'm just going to adjust this hair with G. So I'm just going to adjust it until it looks about right. I don't want it to be too low, but like, so it covers her eyes, but I think this is okay. So let's change back to solid view just to double check. How does that look? Yeah, that looks all, all good. And yes, that looks fine. Um, so, so we've adjusted the hair now. But what we also need to do is we need to change this vertex group right here. So I'll show you what happens when we import that PSA again. It's still not going to work. Um, let's have a look. So when we test it again, you'll see that it's not working. The reason why, uh, so I'm just going to press Control Z. Uh, the reason why it's not working is because we need to change this vertex group uh, to the name of joint head 01. So what this does here is it will because this vertex group, let me show you the weight painting, it's red. So this is, this is uh, what, I guess, uh, what area is being controlled by the bone named joint head 01. And what we, need, what we need to have this is, we need to have this as joint head 01 because, let me show you, if I just change this to edit mode, I'll show you the joint head 01 is the main bone right here. It's this bone right here, if you look in the top left, uh, it's this bone right here, which controls all the other bones. So we're parenting it to the main bone in the head. And now you will see that it works. Uh, so let me just import PSA, sit on log. And as we can see here, fantastic. It's working completely fine. So we just scroll through that animation just to check that it's work. It's, it's uh, all fine. Now I'm just gonna press control Z a couple of times. Now that's done. Okay, so that's how to do it for these older hairs, right? So some of these older hairs will import on the ground and that's how to do it. But since I don't want to do that, because I, I, I want to use the other hair because it looks better, um, I'm just going to press Control Z until I've deleted that hair. Okay, so I'm just going to go Control Z. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this hair here and I'm going to import the other hair that I wanted. So I'm going to go to Heads, Accessories, Top, and I'm going to import this hair instead because it's better and I'm going to delete this other hair. So yeah, so basically I just imported everything, uh, all the meshes, and I just parented these meshes uh, to the base skeleton. That's where I, I was. And if you have a hair like this, which imports on top of the head, all we need to do is just select both skeletons and just go to the few skeletons add-ons and cha change this uh, to the base skeleton. So just FMD skeleton ref, and then just press few skeletons. And then this one will work right here. So <laughs> just uh, select this skeleton and PSK import PSA just to test it. And as we can see, the hair is working. So that's why the few skeletons add on. It's very useful. It's something that I designed myself. It just, um, what it does is it deletes b bones which are named the same and it fuses the skeletons together. Okay, cool. Now we've done all that. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna select all these skeletons by holding the shift key, oh, sorry, all these meshes by holding the shift key. So as you can see, only meshes are selected. Now I'm gonna go move my mouse back here, right click, shade smooth. And this will uh, make our meshes look a lot better. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is, uh, what we need to do is texturing. So what you're gonna do is just go to the material preview tab. And what you're gonna do is select all these meshes right here. Now uh, go to the load UE shaders, uh, panel right here, which you should have enabled. And what you should do is just add um, the DVD Pit Princess clothing preset to all of these. So just make sure that this is selected. And what you wanna do is you want to choose the exported game folder here. So you wanna go down to this add shader map to all materials on selected meshes. 
So what this is, is it will load uh, some, some shader maps dynamically uh, to, to, to this. So I'll just show you what I mean. Okay, so let's go to the materials and you can see that I have two materials here. And when we go to the shading tab, so there, there's nothing there. So right now there's nothing in these materials. This add-on that I designed will load those materials uh, into there. So let's go and let's navigate back to Fang. And we want to go to the game folder because we selected, what we did is we just, if you, if you see, we did the select export game folder. I pressed on the folder icon and I went to Fang and let's go back to the game folder. Can you see how this is named game here? So that's why we want to select this folder, press accept. And now we want to select the materials folder. So the materials folder is the materials folder for the character. So we want to go to Fang and materials. So this is the folder that we want to do. So this select materials folder is optional. As we can see, there's an uh, exclamation mark right here. This means it is not optional. You have to put in the, sel the select exported game folder or it will not work. Okay, so make sure that DVD Pit Princess Clothing is, a set, is the one that we have selected. Then just press A. Uh, add, add shader maps to all selected meshes and just wait a little bit and uh, the shaders will compile. So just give it a little bit of time. It is lagging out a little bit. So just wait for it. Yep, yeah, it's loading slowly in. And yeah, so that's fantastic. So uh, this was designed by, uh, the materials here were designed by uh, Pit Princess. But as you can see here, we have all these loaded in here. So now when we look at these meshes here, we can see that all these uh, materials are loaded straight in and they're all correct. So basically what this does as a quick review, like just to show you why, why what is what is going on? Because it doesn't really make much sense. So let's go to the Fang Recolor, a new tutorial. So what this does is I made an add-on to read, to read uh, just, so if you just go to the Fang materials, these props txt files that are exported with Umodel. So the MIFM Torso 01, right? So let's just go to the materials folder and look, look for MIFM Torso 01.props.txt. So this plugin just reads these ones right here. So it reads TFM Torso 01 ORM, right? So it will just read this one here and it says, okay, so we need this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it to this, uh, this uh, material shaders right here. So that's what it does. And as a deeper explanation, why do we need BC, ORM, N, and, and BDE? Like this doesn't make it much sense, right? To form a realistic looking material, like just on the head, we need to have a diffuse, a pa an, an, an ORM, and an N. So these together form a more realistic looking material. They define properties about how the material looks. For example, the diffuse will affect how does the color look. The ORM will affect the ambient occlusion, the roughness and the metallic, and they will be, the ambient occlusion is in the red channel of the ORM texture. The roughness is in the green channel and the metallic is in the blue channel. And the N right here, the normal map defines the displacement of the mesh. I think that's probably the best I can explain it. And the BDE is just like the, um, I guess the blood, dirt, and emission. So it defines, those are red, green, and blue, divided into red, green, and blue channels. And we're, and mainly it's about like glow. So we have a small amount of glow in this. Okay, <laughs> apologies for explaining that, but um, it is very nice if you know that all models to create a photo a physics, physically based rendering, you need to have those textures. Okay, anyway, so let's get the correct presets on everything. So let's have a look here. So uh, let's make sure. So if you look at the tech, the balls on these material balls right here on the left of this uh, materials tab. So just go to the materials tab and look at this ball right here. So that area is just skin. So to double check, let's go to the solo material panel here and click solo active material for all meshes. So you can see it just soloed this material here. So we can tell it's just for skin, right? So should we be using the clothing preset on that? No, like we should be using the skin preset, right? Because there's something better for it. So 
how do we add it just to this material right here? That's a good question. So we need to use this add shader map to multiple materials box right here. So this, this material right here, MIFM legs 01, this is the zeroth material or the first material, but we define it as index zero. This second material here is index one, right? So if we just want to load a preset to one, um, to one material slot here, I just want it on this material right here, right? So this is one, so I will always just type in a one right here. Therefore, I just make sure that I select this pit princess skin preset and just say add shader map to multiple materials, right? So we've added the skin preset to the skin area, which makes sense, right? <laughs> because we don't want clothing on the skin uh, area. Okay, so that's fine. Now let's just say use nodes true for all materials on all meshes. So then we can see all the materials again. And what we want to do is we just want to check for this one here. So let's check, let's select this material here, the skin thing that we think is skin and just say solo active material for all meshes. And yes, so this area is just skin as well. So obviously it just, it needs um, the skin preset. So let's count from the top. This is the zeroth. Uh, the zeroth index, the second one that we want is the first index. So number one, so we need to make sure there's a one typed into the index of material uh, slots to be loaded and make sure that uh, DVD pit princess skin is selected, right? And just press add. And yep, so we have the skin preset on the skin area, which makes sense again. Now let's use nodes true for all uh, materials on all meshes. And now let's just do the same thing for the uh, hair and the um, head. So the MIFM head 01, 00. So what material slot is this? This is material slot zero, right? So we need to make sure there's a zero right here and press add shader map to multiple materials. And yet you can see it turned more white than that is intended. Like, don't worry, that's fine. Okay, so the final thing here is let's just solo this material right here. So we selected the hair and solo active material. So this area is just hair, right? So we want to make sure that this one is set to hair and what material, uh, what material slot is this? This is material slot zero, right? If we just count from the top down. So, so we want to just uh, make sure there's a zero right here in index of material slots to be loaded and add shader map to multiple materials. So basically the, the key thing is add shader map to all materials on selected meshes is a bulk thing. It's, it's used to, it's used to add it to every material on, on the meshes. But the, this, this one right here, the add shader map to multiple materials is like a surgical precision uh, thing to load presets to single materials, right? Single or multiple materials. So you can just separate with a space if you need to load to multiple materials. But anyway, that's all good. And let us just use, uh, use nodes true for all materials on all meshes, just so then we can see everything again. And that is perfect. Okay. That is great. So what we need to do now is we just need to take care of that recolor, right? So the final thing we need to take care of is that recolor. So what we want to do is uh, we want to go back to the folder right here. So just go to wherever you exported the game folders, the uh, game textures. So game characters, uh, campers, thing, materials, and outfit 01. Do you remember how we exported those CV01 uh, dot props or txt, right? So what we want to do is just copy this name. So rename, just say rename and just copy uh, this MIFM legs 01. Oh, sorry. Actually, let's, let's do the tour. So since we're doing the torso first, let's uh, actually just re, so just click on the mat. So right click on the mat.mat file for the CV01 because CV remarks a recolor. So let's just copy this. So I just did rename and I just said control C to copy that. And what we're going to do is go back to here and just press control V, right? So just, we just, we just change this to CV01. Now what we want to do is we want to change the DVD bit pr princess uh, clothing recolor, change to this preset to load. And what material do we want to load it to? We want to load it to MIFM torso 01 CV01, right? So this first one. So that is index zero from the top, right? And add shader maps to multiple materials. As you can see, it copies the game, the game recolor exactly. And what it does 
is it actually changes these colors here uh, to what is listed in the props.txt file. So I'll just show you what it does, just so you know. Um, so what it does is if we have a look here, if we look at the RGB, this, these three, these are the crucial lines, is it just copies these things here, the RGB values into uh, this material right here. So it changes these materials to those R RGB values exactly. And that's how it does it. Okay, but anyway, enough talk, let's change the second one. And let's let's go back to the, um, to the, um, uh, to the folder here, the materials folder for Fang. So we're just going to uh, do the legs. So just right click on the .mat file for the CV01, control C. So yeah, and now we're just gonna rename this to the, that exact name, CV01, right? And now we just make sure DVD Pit Princess Clothing Recolor preset is loaded. And just, uh, so what, what slot is this again? This is slot zero. So I'm just gonna press, press uh, add Shader maps to multiple materials, and that is done. Yeah, so that's how you do recolors. It's as simple as that. Um, but we can also change to, the, we can cycle through the different recolors. So this one's CV, let's try CV02. So, and we'll just load this Pit Princess clothing recolor again. And as you can see, we're cycling through the different ones. So, oh, sorry, let me just load it here. And as you can see, that's the, C, that's the CV02 in game, right? So that's how the colors are in game. So this is how to follow the the uh, the colors recolors in game. Uh, whoops, uh, this should be yeah CVO three, and I'm just going to change this one to CVO three as well. So yeah, as you can see, that's exactly how to do it. And CVO four, let's change this one. Okay, so I renamed both of them to CVO four. And as we can see, we have this fourth recolor and this fifth recolor. Let's have a look how it looks. Uh, yep. Yeah. Do we even have a fifth recolor? I'm not even sure if we have a fifth recolor. Okay, sorry, we don't have a fifth recolor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's pretty much how to do it. Um, let's have a look if there's any other presets that we... And there's CV08 as well. Sorry, I'll try the CV08 because I am curious how it looks as well. So remember, what we're doing is we're just using these names here and we're changing to these exact names. That's how we can... Uh, that's how we can uh, get the different recolors, exactly how they're done in game. Yeah, so it looks like this. That's the eighth recolor. Okay, yeah, but that's interesting and all, but how do we change these to our own custom ones, right? So what you can do is you can just say, you can untick this box, use recolor colors and values, and then just just uh, make sure that you still have the CV01 or CV that it's named after, after a recolor here. So it's CV08, that's fine, and I'll just load it. And so this is just, so it's less distracting, right? So it doesn't, it's not looking at the values, the RGB values uh, right here. It's not using these values anymore. So now let's go to the shading tab. And in fact, um, what we'll do is we, we can change these to whatever we want. So I will just change this one to maybe I want green. And this A, so that'll be just in charge of the logo. So maybe I'll change that to pink and I'll change this one to, um, uh, to yellow or something. And remember that it doesn't always affect something. So some of these slots can not can sometimes not affect anything. So yeah, so in this case, it's only the green and the pink, uh, which actually really affect anything here, I think. Wait, let me just check. Oh, sorry, this one, this one affects the lining here, right? So the, the B, G channel, but yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just change these colors. So go to the, the shading tab and this one right here and just, and then just select select the mesh and select the material and then just change the colors until they match whatever you want. Yep, so I'll just change these colors and yeah, it's pretty simple. So sometimes some some textures won't have, um, some, some channels like this quaternary, quaternary channel right here, it doesn't affect anything in case of the pants. But yeah, you just have to check. And yeah, so we have this new recolor so this is a custom recolor, and that's how to do a custom recolor. Make sure that these names are CV08 or CV, that, that they're a valid recolor, but just untick this use recolors, uh, colors and values. Okay, so that's fantastic and all, but that's pretty much done. So actually, let's just change this to cycles and let us change this to GPU compute. And I'll change this to 32. Um, 
yeah, that's fine. And I'll what I'll do here is I'll just add in the lights and stuff. So let's go to the render preview mode now and let us uh, add some lights to this and some cameras. So let's let, let's first add a camera and I'll GZ, oh, whoops. I'll use a control alt numpad zero. So this will bring your camera to your current position in the scene. Let's change this resolution maybe to 1920 times 1920. So it's more square and let's press N. Let's go item. Uh, oh no, let's go to view and camera to view. So this means that when you move your view in the camera view, in the scene viewport, it will change uh, the position and rotation of the camera, right? So I think something like this would be good. Okay, and let us add a uh, drag from the left corner to make a new window. And what I'll do here is I'll press N and I'll go view and I'll turn off camera to view because I think that's already perfectly positioned, but I just want to add some lights now. So I'm just using one, uh, one, using one camera so I can adjust the positions of the lights well and one to do the other one. So anyway, I use shift A to, to add a, uh, a spot, a spotlight camera, and I'm just going to maybe put it over here-ish, I don't know. So now it's just, uh, it's up to you to adjust the cameras and the lights, lighting and uh, how it looks. So I think something like this would be okay. Rx just to rotate it in the X axis, Rz to rotate it that way. Now let's just adjust this brightness. So let's go to this point uh, thing right here and let's turn off this power a little bit. Let me, oops, <laughs> I need to turn off camera to view with this. So turn off camera to view. Then I'm just gonna zoom in with control left mouse button to zoom right in so I can see what's going on. Let me turn off that skeleton as well because it's being a little bit distracting. Yeah, this is okay. Uh, maybe I'll turn up the brightness even a little bit more. That's okay as a base as base lighting. Um, but let's add in a few more spot cameras, uh, spot lighting. So, so it's just a little bit brighter. So we can start to see our subject a little bit better. So let's add one camera here, uh, one, one light here, Rx. Yep, and R, something like that. And we're starting to see it, the image form. So don't fear shadow. We, we do want some shadow here, but we also want to make sure our, our character is correctly, is, is bright enough to see in camera, right? So just make sure we're just experimenting with the position and, and um, rotation of our, cam of our lights. And spotlights give you the best control over that. So maybe just turn it up a little bit more. It's not really too interesting yet. Uh, let me just add in a backlight. I'll actually add in a, an area light and I'll just move this backwards. I'll move it like this to the side. I'll go RX, RZ, just to rotate it. And maybe I'll just move it like this. So I'm just pressing G to move these, right? So G is to move, R is to rotate, X, I'm oh, sorry, S is to scale, but we don't really need the scale for this, but let me turn this up really bright because this will be the backlight. As you can see, there's there's that light that's on the left side that's starting to form. That's a little bit too prominent, so I'm just going to move it back to the um, to the uh, left a little bit. I think that's okay, but I think we need some more brightening brightening stuff up the front, especially for her face, because the face is the main part of this image, right? So I'm just going to add, add an area light, maybe uh, get it really close to her face. So this is the this is the best part of having two having two two windows. So you can directly see how your changes are affecting the image. So I'm just going to make this really close, perhaps over here-ish, and I want to adjust this brightness. So maybe just change it to 4.8 or something. Let's, let's see how it looks like this. Oh, that is really bright actually. Let me turn down the size of this because I just want it to be on her face. Is all I just want it to affect basically just her face, if that is possible. Um, yep. Okay, so changing the color of the light will show you exactly where it affects. And let me just, so let me just solo this. Uh, this is not really nice. Uh, maybe I'll just, I'll just go with white for here. Um, yeah, I think pretty much you just need to mess around and just test out different lighting setups for this. So I won't try too hard on this. 
but rx maybe i'll just light up that is too bright that is way too bright so you, if it's too bright you can move it back a little bit yeah okay so i'll probably just <laughs> i'll just see with this um because i don't want to spend too long adjusting the lights but basically you just need to adjust the lights until you're happy with them and i think i'm okay with this so this is okay actually let me just add in one more light up the back let me add in an area light and let me just add it just behind her hair just so then we can have it shining through her hair as a cool effect so yeah so we'll just have it right there ish if i can just have it really close to her hair that'd be really nice and we can just make it a little bit brighter just so then it goes through her hair a little bit better okay let me just adjust the lighting and just make it a little bit brighter yeah i think that's okay that's decent <laughs> That's decent. Yeah, it shows her hair really well, and that's fine. So let's add some animations to this. So let's get the uh, get the animation back. So let's add in a new uh, layout just for this one. So let's add in, let's go back to render preview mode or the material preview. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add, so I'm just going to press N and I'm going to bring up that PSK PSA panel. Oh, let's go back to U model, sorry. And let's Let's, let's export some animations. So let's go to common, the common folder, uh, and let's export some animations. Uh, so let's go to common animations, female. Um, so the common, the common folder is for all the shared resources that all the survivors share. So like animations and everything. Okay, yeah. So, and just remember that I think the default uh, the, the even male animations are actually under female, like the running. So there's not really a male run. So just make sure that you use the female. Anyway, so we'll just add in a thing. We'll add in an animation. So this is all extra stuff. So you could just stop right there and just do it. But I think it's a little bit better if you uh, export some animation. So maybe, actually, let me just use the menu, Id menu idle. So I'll just export I'll go to Fang Animation and I'll export this uh, idle. So I'll just show you the various different things that you can do. So for example, if you wanted, you could just, so it will look like this, so I can just hide it, and it will look like this. And yeah, you can have this and you can just run with it if you want. Uh, yeah, so you can just run with this if you want. Uh, or what you can do is just, uh, if I just Control Z that a couple of times, so I, don't import the animation or you can also try something like you can import some of the other animations and you could just render an animation or an image from that and that would be completely fine um, but let me just uh, let me just uh, export some of the an other animations so I'll just export this one and let's just click import PSA uh, menu idle no item this one probably looks a little bit better for what we're looking for. Uh, let me press numpad zero to go back to the camera. Oh wait, I need to enable screencast keys. Why is this not working? Uh, okay, anyway, yeah, but yeah, so just numpad zero to go back to this, and this will probably work. And you could just render this one out right here. So you could just uh, render, render this one out, and that's how it looks, and that's fine. Uh, but let's do something else. Let's um, Let's, let's let's have some other animations in sequence. Like we'll say what happens if we wanted like her to do some running and then maybe uh, get hit or something, right? So to do that, let's just go to the, the female uh, locomotion. So locomotion is running and everything. And we just want to uh, get the, where is it? Which one do we want? We want one of these. Um, sequences locomotion yep so we just want the this run ft treat i think it's a little bit different let me just double check I, I might i might so yeah so so there should be a run right here so i will actually just try one of these <laughs> so, so from now it's just like trying and um let me just import some of these animations uh actually let me just go back to this other tab and I'll just close this. This looks fine. 
Yeah, as we can see, it looks pretty good. So you could just render this one out. But anyway, um, let us, I just, I just want to get the run animation, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, so I will just import PSA and I will just get that, I will just go to the campers, common, animations, females, and let's just have a look at this. <laughs> yeah, well, that, 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 that's, that's one way of doing it. I don't think that that animation is what we want though. So let's have a look for another animation. Uh, locomotion. I will just try FT treat, I think. So the FT treat. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll export that and I'll just import this animation right here. So let's atom sequences, locomotion, FT treat. Yeah, I think this is the standard animation. Let's go to material preview so we can actually see what's going on. So yeah, this is okay. What happens if we wanted her running and then like maybe unhooking someone, right? So we want her running a little bit and then unhooking someone. So let us just chain animations together. So the way to do that is through the action editor. So I just wanted to teach you guys because I know that um, not a lot of people might know this. So if you want to chain animations together, let's just uh, import another animation of maybe unhooking. So let me just go to U model and let me find some unhooking animations. So it'd be a camper interactions, hook uh, rescue camper in and hook uh, rescue camper end. So let me just export this one and export the camper end as well. And that's all good. Okay, so I'll just import those two and I'll make sure they look okay. So I'll import the uh, hook end and I'll also get the in. Okay, so so this one's the in and then we need, so but we need to chain them together. How do we do that? So let me just uh, get in a, let me grab another panel here so by just dragging from the top right. And what I want to do is I want to change this to the non-linear animation. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to change this action right here by clicking on this button right here. We want to change it first to the uh, uh, run FT treat, right? So we want, so she's running over there, right? So, and then we want to push down this track as the first track. So this will be the first animation. Now we need to change the animation to the hook rescue in, right? So let's have this one as the second one and we'll push this down as the second track. And let me just select the hook rescue in and just bring it down here to this uh, first track here. So as you can see here, we just chained these animations together. That's pretty easy, right? And let's change this to the end because this one was the in, but we want to also get the, the end one. So we want to uh, change this action to the end and just push that one down as well. Okay, let me just press Control Z um, so I can get those. So let me just change, bring this one down to this to the first track as well. And now we can see if we just have a look here, we've chained this one together, and we have a we have animations, right? But if we want the character to actually be moving when it's running, we can also do one more thing. Okay, so let me just change this one to uh, to pose mode. Oh wait, sorry. Let me change this, so this is fine. So we want her to be running from frame uh, one, to, uh, one to 19, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna close this animation editor because it's distracting, but let's have this one here. So I'll just press I, so location, rotation, scale, and then I frame, I think it was 19. So 19 is where she stops. So I'm just gonna move her maybe forward. Whoops, I just pressed H accidentally, but I just press Control Z. So maybe GZ, oh wait, GY, and I'll move her forward a little bit. So maybe she moves here. So if you want her to actually be moving, just do this. So just press I, location, rotation, scale. So notice we were in object mode there, right? So do not do this in pose mode because um, if you do it in pose mode, in the, in, if you have it in non-linear, the non-linear animation editor, um, the keyframes will overwrite like the other keyframes of her moving, right? So you wanna do it, you wanna select the skeleton in object mode and make the keyframes like that. Okay, so as we can see now, 
She moves forward and then she unhooks. And it's that, that's, it's that simple. You can adjust the camera to actually follow. You can keyframe the camera if you want to follow her, but that's how to, to chain animations together. If we just go to the nonlinear animation editor, there's one more thing I want to teach, which is just, so if I just push this down as well, so this one, this one, this one will be a track as well. But if you want to have animations that are, uh, that are blending into each other, that don't really blend. So let me just grab one more animation. Apologies for this tutorial being so long, but it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> so for example, if you want, let's, let's go to the thing and let's grab this, uh, menu idle no no interrupt and let's just push it down to a track as well so if we just push it down right here so we just grab it select and move it here so let's have a look these animations don't really blend together is there a way that we can blend them together seamlessly yes so the way to blend them together seamlessly is just move this one move this one forward a little bit so it's it's above uh, the hook rescue camper end and what we want to do here is just click on the hook rescue camper and this one that we want to blend out of. So let's let's press N uh, and change this to the strip tab. Okay, so we want to blend out, right? So we want to increase the blend out frames. Can you see the blue line that's extending outwards when I move this uh, to more frames? So 3.2 is probably okay. Maybe even a little bit more than, than like there. So that, that's okay. So maybe 5.2. And for this one, I'll blend in. Right, so this one I want to blend in and the other one I want to blend out. So let's have a look how it looks. Oops, oops. Why? <laughs> well, that is a little bit weird. Um, wait one second. Oh yeah, because it's overriding it. Um, I might bring this to the top track. I might make a new track. So to make a new track, um, what all we need to do is add, add uh, an action, add track. Yep. Okay. And then we're just going to bring this to the, to the third track, right? The reason why that wasn't working is because it was overriding the, the, this, this, uh, movement forward. So we just want it on a separate track. So not on the frame one uh, on, on, on track one, because track one is this track here and it's overriding that animation. So make sure it's on a different track. And then as you can see here, it blends a lot more smoothly, right? So the animations just blend together smoothly and that's how you do it. So just have blend out on the frame that you want to blend out, add some frames there and blend in. Okay, so uh, from last time, I just did made a few changes. So basically uh, I just changed the color of her uniform because it was kind of just getting to me. Um, <laughs> so I just pretty much went to the shading tab um, and I just changed the colors until the, the um, <laughs> recolor looked a little bit better than last time. So just a thing to remember about that, you can just go to a website like Coolers, um, Coolers, and just grab a color palette and you can just, uh, so I'll just start the generator and I'll just, uh, yeah. So you can just grab a color palette like this and just change it to hex values and then you can just copy it uh, from here. So basically you can just copy it, uh, these, these values and just put them into Blender here by just changing it to hex and then just pressing control V and then that's fine. You can press enter and whatever, but um, I, I'm fine with this palette. Okay, second thing that I made a change was just with this camera, I just moved it backwards a little bit because um, just so then it matches uh, her animation. But yeah, that was basically all I did. Okay, so, and I just wanna do one correction uh, because this run animation is not actually correct. The correct an run animation, <laughs> I actually exported it uh, from U model, but it should have been uh, it should have been under female anim sequences. Uh, so there's there's one animation here which is run ft, but it doesn't look very good. The better animation that you should have used is anim sequences next gen uh, locomotion and stand run. This is the one that I should have used the whole time. And so basically, I exported that animation, and yeah, I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so I'll just go to the PSK PSA importer here, this tab here. Uh, remember to bring that up, just press N. And basically what you wanted to do is just press import uh, PSA and I'll show you what the bad animation looks like. Uh, by the way, uh, one small thing with the bad animation, uh, it's like this is forward, FT means forward, BK means backwards, left, LT means left and RT means right. But uh, we wanted to just get the uh, 
forward animation there, but it still doesn't look very good. I'll show you what it looks like. Yep, so basically, uh, if you just zoom in, her elbows are broken, <laughs> pretty much. So that's why we want to use the Adam ne next, like the, they look really, really weird. Like they're okay, but then they look really disjointed when you look at her front on. So uh, we're just going to press Control Z to undo that. And I'm just going to import the PSA for the next gen one. And this is the correct animation that you want to import. So let's just import this one. As you can see, it looks fine. But we're just going to pretend that this uh, we did this the whole time and we did not make that mistake. Okay, but yeah, so that's what you wanted to do. And yep. Okay, so now we're just ready for uh, import, uh, we're ready for exporting. So I'll just show you how we should be able to export it. So basically, uh, the settings for export is first of all, we want to make sure that this uh, checkbox right here, the denoising data. So you want to go to the random passes tab and then the denoising data, make sure that render pass is enabled. Okay, and make sure that you're on cycles and you're, you've got GPU compute. Uh, we're not gonna do the branch path tracing today because that's a little bit uh, convoluted and we might do it next time. But basically just set your render samples to something like 32 or 64, both are okay. Um, especially with our node setup, it's not gonna be a problem. Also make sure you go to the film tab and make sure that uh, transparent is enabled because this will make for easy compositing if you're using this later. Okay, so, and also uh, just make sure that uh, you're under this uh, render settings tab, uh, that your file format is PNG and it's RGBA uh, and uh, yeah. So the reason why is even if you're rendering an animation, use PNG, please use PNG because PNG is lossless. It's completely lossless. So you can decide to do whatever you want with the animation after you're done rendering. Uh, um, so you'll never lose any quality and then you can have the full quality image and decide to downsize to uh, MP4 or anything else. Okay, and second is Blender crashes a lot of the time. And if you do not render as PNG, if you render as an FFmpeg video, uh, for MP4, it's it's going. If it crashes, you lose your whole uh, render. So don't do that. Please use PNG. Uh, I'll link a video in the description below on how to um, use Blender itself to create uh, you to see to make image sequences into a video very very easily. It's very easy. Uh, you just go to the video sequencer and just add the image sequence and then just render it out. But anyway, we won't do that. Um, yeah. So let me just render uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, so yeah, that's all good. Those settings are fine. So I'm just going to go to the compositing tab. I wanna click use nodes. Um, so you should see something pop up, but I'm just going to, okay, yep. So we just need a composite and a, a render layers pretty much. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> yeah. So when you use click use nodes, you'll get this and it'll be joined to like that. Um, but what you wanna do is, so just enable use nodes and you want to put in a denoise node right in between them. So you want to disconnect those and just put in a noisy image, uh, denoising normal and denoising albedo. So just connect those three and connect it to uh, the, the composite node and basically you're done. So we're just going to render out an image. So I'm just going to render image and it should be pretty fast uh, just because it's 32 samples and it shouldn't be too bad. Yep, yeah. and it's just rendering out. and it looks fine for now. Yeah, so we have this uh, beautiful image here and it's because we enabled film transparent, it is it does have transparency. So if you're rendering an image, just remember to go image, save, and then save it to wherever you wanna do. So I'll just have this as maybe in this new folder here and I'll just call it uh, bang new recolor new, tu new tutorial run. Yep, that's done. Okay, and if you wanna render an animation, basically, uh, the things that you should be aware of, just make sure that the frame start and frame end are set to whatever you want. So maybe I would get to like 112, the frame 112, and just go render, render animation, and basically you're away. Uh, but you do need to set uh, what folder that you want to render to. And yeah, so just make sure to set that folder before you render. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, okay, yeah, so the final, final part of this tutorial uh, is just a bonus. So this is an optional thing. Uh, if you want to use Autorig Pro, 
I will show you how to use that on uh, these Dead by Daylight uh, uh, models. So basically, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna make a second copy. So I made a second copy of everything here. I was using the shift key to select all of them. So I'll just hide all these uh, from both the viewport uh, view and everything else. So we have the second one and basically you can't use animations on, on, um, on if, you, if you are going to use a custom animations, you can't also combine that with the game animations. Okay, so you need to, because the game animations cannot be imported onto an IK rigged skeleton. Uh, so yeah, you can't have both, unfortunately. So I'm just going to go to pose mode and I'm just gonna press A to select all bones. I'm gonna press Alt G to clear all uh, pose uh, locations, Alt R for to clear all rotation transforms and Alt S to clear all scale transforms. Yep, so then we have a character back in the neutral pose and let us just, uh, yeah. So let me just show you how to get Auto Rig Pro. Auto Rig Pro, you can get it from here. Uh, Auto Rig Pro is on the Blender market. And then you also need to get Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. So let me just search that up as well. I would not recommend these uh, if they were not like fantastic because these are, will make your life like very easy and they're the most downloaded plugins. So you need to download both these and uh, install them on your machine, uh, install them in Blender. So let me just uh, show you what I mean. I can just close this. Okay, so edit preferences, make sure that both uh, Auto Rig Pro and, so Auto Rig Pro, Auto Rig Pro Tools and Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig, they're all enabled. So make sure you've installed all three. Okay, so from here, we can just press N to open this uh, panel right here. Uh, go to ARP, Auto, Auto Rig Pro, and then just put your model into pose mode. So when you go down here, you should scroll down, you should see Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig, just open that up. So you won't have any of this. You won't have any of this, so I'll just uh, delete all this. Um, and then we'll, we'll get started. So basically, you just wanna select the joint hip RT as the bone first. So no notice that this side on the right, this is the right side, okay? So if you look uh, from the back, that's this is the right side and that's the left side. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Okay, so basically let's add a leg. Let me just close this tab here because it's kind of distracting. Uh, if I can just drag in the corner, drag and hold in the corner and just that'll delete the tab. Okay, so I wanna just click on this joint hip RT bone. So I'll add a leg and I'm just gonna make sure that this is a right leg here. Okay, that's all fine, but we need to add some twist bones because these bones right here, the joint hip roll RT, that's a hip bone right there. Uh, sorry, a twist bone. And this one is also a twist bone right here as well. So. This one is the twist bone for the hip. And this, this bone here, uh, this bone here, so I'll just select it and I'll select the eyedropper. So this is the knee roll uh, or the twist bone for the knee. And that's basically it. So there is a little trick here, but I will show it later because the toes, we don't actually need this bone, but I'll show you what happens with it first because otherwise you won't understand why we need to do that. Okay, so this is the left leg. Whoops, I selected the wrong one. So I need to select this hip LT first, then I need to add a leg. Okay, so this is a left leg, that's correct. Let's add the uh, twist bones. Let's add the hip roll. So select the hip roll and select uh, the eyedropper and then uh, the knee roll bone and select the eyedropper there. Okay, that's both legs done and we're pretty, we're going along pretty well. Okay, so for the spine, let's do the spine next. So the spine, ignore this joint hip master uh, 01, we don't need it. Um, basically, let's just add, just click on the joint pelvis and then just click on spine and okay. So joint pelvis, and now we have to manually select all the bones, that's completely fine. So we wanna select the joint torso A01, that's the first spine bone. This is the second spine bone. Make sure, like, uh, sometimes errors can occur when you're making the rig if you don't have the spine bones like um, correct in the correct order. So spine three always has to be above spine two. I think that's what causes the issues. If you're having issues making the rig, uh, come on the Discord, of course, and also try to change these bones around and uh, change different combinations, try hip master, other things. That's what I have basically been doing. Okay, yep, and that's pretty much the entire spine done, I think, yep. Okay, let's also do the right and left arms. Okay, so to do the arms, just click on the clavicle, RT, 
press OK, change this to a right arm. OK, that's, it's pretty much fills out everything, which is great, but it's missing the middle finger. So the middle finger is actually just this one here. So let's select the ART, because that's the bone uh, that all the other bones are selecting. And make sure it's on three bones, because we have three bones for each uh, hand, uh, if you can see. Okay, and we can also add some twist bones. We'll add those twist bones right here. The twist bone is the shoulder roll. So let us add that one there by clicking on the bone, then clicking on the eyedropper. And this one here, which is the elbow roll RT. So let's add that right there. Um, I should also add like, what is an IK rig anyway? It will make making custom animations a lot, lot easier. Okay, so that's what an IK rig is. Like it makes the process of making uh, custom animations a lot more natural because it has the parents of the, like the hand bones move the shoulders and the, uh, the shoulder and the clavicle bones, which makes a lot more sense. I'll show you what I mean in a couple of seconds. Okay, but anyway, so we, we added the left arm that's completely fine. Let's add the twist bones and let us add this as the middle bone, the middle finger. So we selected the middle finger bone, the eyedropper. Okay, and let us add this one as the shoulder roll and this one as the elbow roll. Cool. Okay, so, and let's add the final one, which is just the head. So, yep, I'm just adding the head right here and it pretty much adds everything automatically. Let's just have a look at the neck. So we have, we only have one neck bone, so we don't need the second neck bone here because there's no second neck bone. So that's completely fine. We can leave it empty. And this one right here, um, we don't actually need it, but I, I will change it to this joint here and I'll show you what is the problem that we face with that. Other than that, yeah, we're all done. So let us just say quick rig, press that uh, neck twist and preserve volume. Um, honestly, I don't actually know what they do, but uh, it works with it. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna press okay. And yeah, we'll just let it do its thing. So just wait a little bit of a while and it should. Yeah, so yeah, we have, all, we have this really nice skeleton, which is made for us. And it's got all these boxes, which make it a lot nicer. So if we just move this, this is FK right now. Uh, but let me show you some of the issues that we need to solve with this. So if we just have a look here, wow, what happened to that toe? And same ha happens with the, the uh, left foot. And one more thing that is the problem, if we just move this here, can you see how the hair is not moving with it? So we can just solve this really easily by just pressing Control Z and we'll just Control Z all those changes. If we can just Control Z. Okay, then we'll just re press, re press revert. And so instead of head end, we'll just take out head end altogether. Okay, so we won't have any head end. And same thing with the legs. So we'll just go to the legs and just take out that, the toes. And this will solve that issue right there. Otherwise we can, otherwise we'll, we can solve it with weight painting, but honestly, I don't wanna do it. And if we can just solve it easily, we will. So I just deleted both toes uh, there. So I just deleted everything there. I just press okay again. And let's just see if those issues are still present. Have a look, yeah, so those issues are completely gone. And as you can see, this this is actually IK rigged, I believe, I don't know. Uh, but like, cause can you see how the, moving this leg bone normally shouldn't move the knee? But this is a lot more natural because let's say I need to grab an apple or something. So with the normal FK process, the FK rig or forward kinematics, we have to move the arm in place like this. And then we have to move, adjust the the arm up here, like it's, it's rotation like this. And then we need to adjust this one here, right? So it's not very natural, okay? So if I just uh, select all bones, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, um, and let's just select all bones and I'll go to the, um, where is it? Which tab is it? I'll go to the, yeah, I'll go to the tool panel. So I'll switch all the I bones to IK, right? And yeah, so, what you'll see here is when I move this bone here, it moves the the the, the shoulder and the uh, clavicle. So it moves both of those. So IK is a lot better to make animations with, right? And I can also rotate the arm or the, the hand to be more natural. So maybe they're shaking your hand or something. And then, yeah, so basically we can do pretty much whatever we want with custom animations now. And it's relatively easy because this skeleton is fantastic. And we can just move it like that. If we need to move it forward or backwards, we can adjust the rotation. 
of this. And one extra thing that I do want to tell you about is if I search up joint jaw, so if I just search up joint jaw, we can't actually see it, uh, sorry, not in this FMD skeleton ref. We want to look for this one in the character group, this rig here, the joint jaw here. So we can just, we can just move it down and that's how to open the jaw. Uh, but we also should give this uh, joint jaw a little bit of a bigger uh, thing. So we'll just go to viewport display, CS sphere. Now I'll just make this one a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll change it to a CS arrow. Yes, I'll change it to a CS arrow. So, and then I just increase the scale so then we can see it better. So now this is the jaw and then we can see how we can animate the character really easily. And we have like the eyes and everything. So this, this thing right here, I'm pretty sure, what is this? Joint cam. Yeah, so yeah, so this is pretty much it. Yeah, so that was pretty much the bonus of how to use Auto Rig Pro and uh, everything else. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, you are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.